Welcome everybody to the Falcon One Shot. On the agenda we have Stranger of Sword City here today. This right here is a game I'm kind of fond of just because I'm a really big fan of dungeon crawling RPGs. That's essentially what Stranger of Sword City is all about. This was um, developed by Experience and it's being published by Nis America, so just a bit of a heads up for that. This was originally a PS Vita title and it eventually made its way over to the 360 uh, in Japan anyway, and then in the US or at least the international releases where in the PS Vita and also the Xbox one So we're finally getting a port of the game as well over to the PC on Steam Which should be releasing on June 6th if I'm correct So just a bit of a heads up if you want to keep your eye on this one now the story behind stranger of sword cities What initially drew me to the title itself? I find it to be pretty intriguing at least to me It reminded me a lot of lost honestly, but you are essentially a regular Joe living in the regular world You are on a plane ride while you enter end up crashing into some strange world which is not where you initially took off from um, and you will be meeting other strangers in the game which will end up being your party members you know you're a guild essentially of strangers and what strangers are are people from other worlds that have been sucked into this world for unknown reasons and your goal is to obviously escape that, that's kind of breaking it down really easy and there's more to it as you go along but that's kind of giving you a small little breakdown of it but without further ado let's get into the new game over here and show you what it's all about and how it plays out here and there should be a bit of a small cutscene, if I'm correct, so we'll let this play out here, and uh, we'll cut back in soon. Alrighty, cool. So as you saw, there's like a weird interesting mechanic where there is still a television transmission from the regular world into this world that we're currently in now. And you're, that was obviously being watched by somebody who will become a prominent part into this story here pretty soon. Um, you are prodded by a dull pain and start to regain consciousness. You finally open your eyes and see ruins drowned by sand. Noise and the force of impact still echo through your head. There must have been a crash. Your body hurts, but miraculously you aren't fatally wounded. When you realize you're safe, your attention turns to the cold. You search for something to warm to wear, and you find an old box. You don't even care about the mold, you wrap the clod around yourself. It's not a good look, but you don't have the time to care. Please select your game difficulty. Well, let's just go with normal here with this one. Right, right, right. Alright, cool. And you get to create your character to begin with over here. And it's a lot of um, portraits to kind of mess around with, essentially, and um, there's a lot of races you could choose from. I don't believe your character, at least early on, maybe you unlock it down the line, but early on you have to be a human. You can choose any other other races so far. I'm not sure if you're always going to be a human. I guess that probably wouldn't make sense for the story, since you are coming from the regular world. It would be kind of weird if you were like an orc in the real world, so... I guess you have to be human, but your other party members could be other races, obviously. Um, for this one, though, let's see, it doesn't really matter what you choose over here, it's just kind of like your own portrait itself. I went with this one because I actually like how this guy looks over here, so I'll go with this bad boy over here. I am indeed a male at times, and I am not 18 years old anymore. <laughs> I used to be. It used to be a fun time. Now I'm a 28-year-old man. Old bird. Now, what's really cool about this, mind you, this is not only because um, you want to find out, like, if you want to use your actual age, but all this actually has an impact on your life point. So, for instance, right now, at age 28, my max life points are only two, meaning if I get knocked out twice without being recover without recovering my hearts, I will essentially die. I will cease to exist in this world. And the same can be said about your other party members as well. So, the age plays a factor because you'll get more points per level up, but you will also get less recovery time and you'll have less life points if you are older. So, for instance, if I come over here to 80, 91, for instance, I only have one life point, meaning if I get knocked out in a fight, I am done. No more existing, but if I do level up, I get a minimum of at least 10 points to my level, so there is that. And if you go over here to the youngest age, which is 10, you get 3 life points, you recover faster, but you also get less experience by um, leveling. So uh, it's actually pretty cool the way that's done. But let's go with 28 over here, go into next. As we mentioned, as I discussed just now, I guess you have to be human because you are coming from the human world. There's no elves, dwarves, mig or nays around here to my knowledge, so human it is. 
Um, and we get to choose a talent over here. So we're going to be the chosen one because of story purposes. But I guess at some point or another, there's got to be a way to unlock these other things, I have to imagine. But right now, we'll be the chosen one. Go next over here. And you get to reroll your points. As we mentioned, I believe my minimum is going to be five. But I can roll up to an eight if I wanted to, if I wanted to spend so much time doing this here. Um, which I obviously do not, so... I kind of do, actually. <laughs> Alright, let's six. I'll take the six, fine. I could go up to an eight. I've gone up to an eight off camera, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then you get to put those points into your um, stats over here. So let's go with a bit of strength, some agility. I do like to have the whole thief dagger mentality. I also like to go for the samurai class for this class, so for this um, run. So let's do strength and agility. Fast and hit strong. That's what the samurai thing's all about. Going to next over here, I'm going to be samurai, as I mentioned, a front row speedy fighter. It uses one hit kill swords. Sounds good to me. Over here, you get to choose your voice for attacks, damage, and death. This doesn't really matter for the premise of this video, so... Next, gotta give myself a name. I am Falcon. And my nickname, well... Falcon. I should be Senor Falcon, as we all know at this point, but that's fine. We'll just go with Falcon. And that's perfectly cool. I just want to get this um, video on the road here and show you some more of the actual gameplay. So as I mentioned, this is going to be your traditional dungeon RPG crawler, so don't expect anything done that's, like, you know, completely out of the norm here. If you played a dungeon crawler RPG, you know what you're getting yourself into here. How long has it been? Falcone roams around the Sandy Ruin alone. We get to move around yet? No. But then you notice something echoing behind you. Oh, oh, I knew it! You've arrived! Who are you, old man? You turn around and see an elderly man that you don't recognize. The elder is scared as if he is staring at a beast. You, right there. From the looks of you, you've come from the land of the strange. The flying ship that fell here. Looks like you are only the survivor. How pitiful. Um, who are you? I don't even have a name now. I'm just an old man. But anyway... I digress, you should get out of here quick. I'm pretty sure the background might have some Jap- like, they talk in Japanese, which is the original dialogue of the game. Uh, I'm gonna try to make sure that I lower the volume that in the post-editing here, so I'm not talking over this guy talking in Japanese. I figure you probably have a better time understanding me in English than the guy talking in Japanese, although that's very much debatable, because I'm hard to understand sometimes, apparently, because of my weird accent. Yeah, 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 American scumbag accent here, Falcon. Anyway. You are a stranger, you have special power in this land. The evil that crashed your ship must have sent someone after you. You cannot let the greedy corrupt someone with your magnificent power. I'll lead the way. Please, just head north. I won't do you wrong. The moment you said that, you basically told me you are. The Elder disappeared. Alrighty, cool. So, yeah, yeah, I know how to play the game. I'm playing with a keyboard now, which I originally was playing with a controller when I played this off-camera, so maybe I don't know what I'm doing. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. So let's go forward here. Ugh, surprised? This is a dark road. Your sight won't help you. But no need to worry. You just keep moving. Alrighty. Ominous fellow over here. Are you moving right now? For now. Oh, right, right. Psst. Don't use that, fam. Just use W to move forward and then turn and place wherever you want to go. So as you can see, we have a pit over here, so we can't go north anymore. We have to find our next path over, which should be down over here. Got a door. Another pit. For the most part, the game won't allow you to jump into a pit, so even if you're trying to, like, you know, commit suicide for whatever reason you want to, uh, the game will make sure you don't jump into a pit and kill yourself. Although, there's gonna be a lot of traps in this game, as you could probably imagine, with a first-person RPG dungeon crawler. But, um, that's something that's introduced down the line, not right now. So, come down this way, next door, this should lead to the exit, yeah. An armor corpse lies there. This might be useful, there is a bag full of items. And we got ourselves three potions, great. Gonna be needing that for some combat. This over here, I still have not been able to access just yet, so I guess that's the end of the line. You have to open that up at some point. But for now, here is our exit. A piercing breeze blows through, leaving clouds of dust. In the distance, under the starry sky, machines rust like skeletons. As you can see here, this is essentially the, what I talked about, what I found so interesting about it. Essentially, there's like some sort of weird portal, magnet, giant magnets, dog, how do they work? But something that's pulling stuff from all over the, I guess the other world, our world, into this land over here, as you can see. 
Do you see them? They all rain down from the sky. A long time ago, the Great One rebelled against God. The attempt failed, but the struggle left the sky. That's how the door that leads to the land of strangers was created. But after all is said, it isn't so bad. These things falling into the sky are like treasure to the poor. <laughs> after all this, I found you. As the Elder raises his voice, a snake monster appears. Suddenly, a giant wyvern appears. The Vessels, they've been waiting for you to fall into this land. But it's too late for you. Lie down and be devoured. <laughs> oh, sure. Don't mind me, let me just go ahead and be a feast for these creatures out here. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're fucking insane, dog. <laughs> Don't you worry. Don't you worry. How about you don't worry, because I got this lady over here backing me up now. Without warning, a triumphant voice comes from behind the old man. The giant wyvern's neck makes a wet, slicing sound and splits. The girl who slew the wyvern yells to Falcone, drenched in blood. Yeah, you heard her. Let's finish this. You there, give me a hand. That I shall. Here's our first fight. Enemy encountered. So we get to ch uh, control um, this chick over here and ourselves as well. We look fucking bad, I was gonna tell you. We look like a baller. I'm not sure why I'm decked out already. I just basically... I crash-landed from a uh, plane in our world, and I crash-landed over here, and this is what I look like. This is how I was traveling for plane comfort. Now, honestly, to be honest with you, this is not really a comfortable look for plane riding, but that's just me. Uh, let's get into this fight over here. We have a couple of Hydras up front and the Giant Hydra over here. So, with um, Homegirl, let's go into fight... Actually, that's not good. We want to go with skill. I'm going to probably go with, um, Chivalric Sword. An attack, an enemy in each row, halves the user's defense, and plus creatures as well. And we also have Iron Defense, which is going to be to taunt enemies and increase avoid. Higher rate when in the same row, so this would give both of us a higher chance to avoid. But for now, let's go into, um, Chivalric Sword. And I will just go ahead, and I have no special abilities just yet, so I'll just go and attack this way. Uh, what's really cool about this, um, what I like about this too, because um, you know how dungeon RPGs can be kind of really grindy down the line? You could essentially go about a fight regularly, or if you don't want to just um, take so much in a fight, if you hit fast supply, oh, this is an example, mind you. The entire turn just took place right now, instantly. Now, mind you, you will miss out on what's happening to your party at the time, but if you feel confident in it, you could basically, as you can see, I'm almost dead already, though, so that was not a really good round for me. But that's to be expected as we just, you know, we're level 1, we have no equipment, we're completely weak here. So we might indeed pass out. Uh, we have Rio over here, let's go and have her do a, maybe she has a skill for us, we could do... No, I think we go with um, the sword attack one more time, it'll attack this Hydra and somebody in the back. And for myself, I'll go ahead and maybe use a potion here to keep myself alive a bit longer. And now we'll just go into regular speed here. So she attacked once, 122 damage. And she attacked a monster in the background for 60 damage. And I healed myself up. I will not survive another hit, though, so maybe that potion was for naught. I dodged the attack, luckily. Not that one. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I died off-camera, so you don't necessarily have to die, but if you do die, it's not really too much of a surprise, and, you know, for story purposes, you're still fine, I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's see here, we'll continue with the fight here, we with, um, our chick, Ryu, it does seem that's her name, Ryu, Ryu, not sure. And we could just do fast supply at this point. This big-ass Hydra dropped to the back, and now we send the little guys forward, so we'll go back into skill, use this over and over until we bring them down. One of them is down. How's she doing? Oh, she's perfectly fine. She's not losing this fight. It's us that are going to lose it, but not her. That's what I like about the fast supply thing. You know, if you feel you're confident about it, just hit fast supply, and your fights will definitely be a lot shorter than you really have to be here. And they're both down. Now, I don't think we got any experience for that because we did die, but, you know, so be it. If you do survive, you get to, like, instant level up, I'm pretty sure. And we got an item for this um, fight, which is a shield. We don't know what that is. We have to identify items like very much like a lot of um, dungeon RPGs do. Identify the item, and if it's a good item, you get to keep it. If it's a cursed item, you have to clear the curse. You know how it works out. Uh, no. What are you? That, that soul, it's mine. Apparently, it's Shang Tsung now. Shut your mouth. Get out of here. If I see your face again, I swear I'll kill you. <laughs> Such a ferocious girl. As suspected of a vessel. It's alright. 
I still have enough time. Yeah, you creepy old dude. The Elder's voice fades away somewhere beyond the dust cloud. The girl with the sword kneels down beside Falcon and presses a shining feather right against the chest. As you can see, it's all story related that hold that right there. It's not a big deal. Falcon regain consciousness. Are you alright? Looks like I made it in time. Um, you saved me. You don't need to thank me. I did what I have to do as a member of the Stranger's Guild. I am Ryo Sukasada. Just call me Ryu. And what's your name? You introduce yourself. Nice to meet you. I am like you, a stranger who wandered into this world. We have a lot to talk about, but first we have to get out of here. That guy just now might come back with a lot more monsters. Where's the exit? The exit is west. Let's go. Alright. Um, Alrighty guys, so this right here is a jump forward to my off-camera save. Mind you, it's not really too far into the game either, but it has like more of the progress of the story done and whatnot. Essentially where I'm at right now is going to be the Stranger's Guild, which is essentially where Ryu leads you to after she saves you. You meet the rest of the crew and then you become part of the guild itself. Um, right now let me show you my party by going into Edit Party over here. And this right here is the currently people that we have. When you first start off the game, these will be the default characters already available. You have a knight, you have a fighter, you have a dancer. A cleric and a wizard, which I'm still not sure if this right here is male or female. Stupid, sexy, androgynous of elves, you never know with them. And then over here you can actually go ahead and create your own um, characters as well. So if these guys get knocked down, you have to recover them. You basically come up here and make up your own party members. You could choose the portrait you want to use for them, the class, and distribute the points based on the skill, the race, you know, etc, etc. So there is that. Alrighty, cool. So, um, now we're ready to go. We have all of our party over here set up. Let's go ahead and try to find ourselves a little bit of a combat. Like, mind you, the combat is not going to be any more di different than it was originally, but I want to show you, like, the entire party base mechanic as well. Now, the people on the three, the three on the side over here are going to be the back row members. So, obviously, if they have, like, a, a melee weapon back there, they won't be attacking anybody up front. But if you have somebody like a wizard or maybe a dancer who has, like, long range skills, you could obviously hit people in the front line and the back line as well. But at the moment, these guys here cannot hit anything up front with any sort of melee weapons. But that's the reason why we have myself, the knight, and the fighter up front. So let's go forward here, and it's going to be a little bit of a fight for us. We have some treasure back there as well. My god. <laughs> You're throwing a lot at me already in the first fight. So you have about six enemies over here. Um, the levels can range from, like, you know, low-level enemies to high ones. And if you run into high ones early on, you could be in some trouble here. So... Sometimes it's best to use Divinity and Flash Escape, assuming you have enough morale for it, which costs 5 and we have 10 morale, so we should be able to escape if we wanted to. But before I make that decision over here, let's, sure, let's make sure we can fight these guys for one, so that's going to be me. Um, I do believe I already decked my dude out with some better equipment. He's got like a Master Dagger and another Katana, so he's double attacking. Level 9, that's not too bad, honestly, so we'll go after Homeboy over front. Our Knight has a Bamboo Spear, he'll probably go... Level 9 isn't really too bad. Follow up on this guy. My fighter has a double weapon. She'll go after over here. And then we have my dancer back over here. Has a skill concentrate. Has trick as well. Use two stock items at once. And then use skills that require concentration. We're not really looking for that though. So it's going to fight. Is maybe toss a dagger to the scavenger in the back. Or maybe even the hopworm. Eh, let's just bring down the guys up front first. And let's see. My cleric, you know, you don't have to do anything for us right now. So go into defend. And then with my wizard, we'll do a fire bolt, maybe over here. By action. Missed the darts. The boomerang, boomerang hit for two. Oh, good job, dancer. Very nice damage, huh? 58 damage. Nine. Third nine? Oh, baby. Ever since I gave myself that upgrade in the weapon, I've been doing a lot better as well. One of them's down. We have the bamboo spear knight. 41 damage. Fire bolt. Boom! Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go into just fighting, fighting, fighting over here. Just hit anybody. Fend and go back to fire bolting around. Do a fast apply this time around. Two of them down already. How are we doing? Our fighter took a bit of damage here, but he's relatively, she's relatively fine, I should say. What is she like, a cat lady? She's a cat lady, all right. Always got to have a cat lady when it comes to um, these JRPG type of games, huh? Go after here, after here. Boom. You to defend. Hey, you could drop a heal, actually, now that I think about it. Drop a heal on Cat Lady over here. You go with Firebolt on this guy. Fast apply it. 
Oh, they called for reinforcements, did they? You jerks. But you guys get an idea how this plays out. Again, really interesting title. There's a lot more to actually show off, but obviously it's a Falcon one-shot with a dungeon RPG game. It takes a while for it to get going, but there's plenty of other dungeons and locales to check out, but there is what it is. Uh, description below will have all the information for the title itself. It comes out on June 6th, so just a bit of a heads up in case you are looking forward to it. You can find out the details for it on the bottom below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. I will catch you next time.